Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to religion. We are starting a new chapter uh, today in religion, and it is all about learning more about prayer. Today, we are going to be focusing on learning about that the disciples asked Jesus how to pray and that Jesus, of course, taught them. So when we pray, what do you do? Basically, some of you Maybe you pray in your head, like we pray in our, usually we pray in our heads at church when we go to go to mass. Maybe at night you pray out loud. Maybe you kneel by your bed. Maybe you stand. Maybe some of you only pray at church, which is okay. Maybe you fold your hands. Maybe some of you may hold hands with your families when you pray, whether some of you may even pray before your meals at home. And the apostles, had the best person to learn from and how to and how to pray and obviously that was through Jesus so of course the disciples asked Jesus how they should pray and Jesus taught them and we also of course can learn from the apostles and Jesus and what it means to pray so i'm going to go ahead and read you a paragraph out of our religion book it's that said the disciples knew that when they prayed, they were talking to God, praising him and asking for what they needed. But they wanted to know how they should pray, so they asked Jesus to teach them. Jesus taught, taught them to say the prayer we call the Our Father. By giving the disciples that one prayer, Jesus was able to teach them how they should pray. So, and we're gonna talk, we're gonna go more into depth about the Our Father tomorrow, boys and girls, but for today, what you need to know is that the Our Father is a prayer that Jesus taught the disciples, and it really was, it really is meant to kind of help us learn to pray. And like we will go more into that tomorrow. So, but he did teach them that Our Father. Now, I'm going to go ahead and read um, a quick uh, passage out of the Bible from the Gospel of Matthew, and it's going to be about praying, and it's actually going to be. I'm going to stop when they get to the, our father, but it's actually going to be about right when uh, they te Jesus teaches the our father. So it says, sorry, guys. Okay. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your, father's, for your father knows what you need before you ask before you ask him. And that is about where we're going to end there with the Bible excerpt, um, because right after that is when uh, Jesus is going to give the Our Father. So basically what Jesus is telling everybody here about praying is that when you pray, you should be doing it to just talk to, to God, to Our Father you shouldn't be trying to get something out of it boys and girls like some sort of jesus even uses that word reward you shouldn't be when you pray you shouldn't be praying because oh i'm doing this because i know i'm gonna get this out of it that's not the point of prayer boys and girls yes it's good you're talking to god and praying to god but what jesus is saying here if you're doing it to be rewarded and to kind of when he's when he says here do not announce it with trumpets if you do it and you say well i prayed so 
that means God loves me and I'm going to go to heaven because I pray to God because I know it's good for me. Um, that's kind of what he means by don't announce him at trumpets. When you do it so because you know it's good and you're looking to get something out of it, that kind of takes away the purpose, boys and girls. When you pray, you should just be praying to speak to God and that is just reward enough. You don't need any you know, compliments from people about how good you are at praying or that, oh, I prayed for this person, so that makes me a good person. You should just pray to pray. You shouldn't need something out of it. Um, to give you a good example of this, um, with our dojos that we used to have in the, cl in the classroom, I used to tell you guys when you would ask for the dojo, I sometimes wouldn't give it to you because then you were going looking for the dojo. And the point of the dojos was that you were just supposed to do, you know, follow the rules or do something good just because without looking for any type of reward. When you do something and you say, well, Mrs. Ensel, I helped so-and-so, can I have a dojo? When you ask for it, that kind of takes away my purpose of them because you're just doing it because you want a reward, you want something. And that's what Jesus means about praying. Don't, don't do it because you want people to compliment you or you want to seem like a good person because you know it's something good you should be doing. You should pray because you want to speak to God. Um, don't do it just so you can stand there and say, well, I pray all the time and that makes me wonderful. And that's what Jesus means by this one here. And then down uh, in this gospel reading here. And when he says here, when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans. Pagans, boys and girls, is a fancy name when we talk about those people who wouldn't pray, who would pray to other gods. And he doesn't say, your prayer doesn't have to be long. You don't have to keep babbling. You guys know babbling means you go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. You don't have to go, you don't have to keep doing that. You can just say, I pray for this. And you can be short and simple and sweet. And like Jesus says there, your father knows what you need before you even ask him. So you don't need to go on and have big, long prayers to make it a special prayer. And that's what Jesus uh, is talking about in that point there. So what did Jesus say? To recap, what did Jesus say here? Don't pray just to be seen, to get complimented from other people and to get some sort of reward. Um, I just talked about don't seek to be praised by it. You need to be humble, um, be generous, and you don't have to pray out in public. You can pray by yourself and that's fine. People don't need to see you pray. And just finally, in the last part of it, you can be short and sweet, say what you mean, and you don't need to just keep going on to pray longer because you think it seems better. And that's what um, Jesus means here and why we should be praying and kind of how we should be praying. So there is that. To go with this Bible passage, I'm going to read another one. And it kind of goes with the same thing of you don't need to do something for a reward and to be, I guess the word is flashy and be seen. So I'm gonna read you another Bible story about a Pharisee who was just a person and then a tax collector. Um, a tax collector is, I guess, just kind of like today, somebody who comes and collects money that the government or the king or at this time or whoever needed. So being right with God. There were some people who thought that they were very good and looked down on everyone else. Jesus used this story to teach them. One day, there was a Pharisee and a tax collector. Both went to the temple to pray. The Pharisee stood alone, away from the tax collector. When the Pharisee prayed, he said, God, I thank you that I am not as bad as other people. I am not like men who steal, cheat, or take part in adultery. Remember, guys, from our commandments, adultery meant not keeping your wedding promises. I thank you that I am better than this tax collector. I give up eating, which is a fancy word for that is fasting, twice a week, and I give one-tenth of everything I earn. 
that means like he donates boys and girls his money when he says, I give one tenth of everything I earn. It means he donates his money. The tax collector stood at a distance. When he prayed, he would not even look up to heaven. He beat on his chest because he was so sad. He said, God, have mercy on me. I am a sinner. I tell you, when this man went home, he was, and this is Jesus talking now, guys. I tell you, when this man went home, he was right with God. But the Pharisee was not right with God. Everyone who makes himself great will be made humble. But everyone who makes himself humble will be made great. So basically to go with our other Bible passage, what Jesus is saying here with the Pharisee and the tax collector, the Pharisee who, I mean, is a good person. I'm not saying he was a bad person, boys and girls. He prayed, he went to church and everything, but he kind of goes up and is a little bit showy or flashy. And he you know makes this big old to do about, oh, I'm so happy that I'm not as bad as other people and that I pray and I'm not like this tax collector by me. I'm so happy I'm just not a bad person. And he's kind of going on and on about what a good person he is and he's not like the tax collector and all the good things. He talks about how he fasts twice a week and he doesn't eat, how he gives, he donates his money. And he's like, I'm so great. Isn't that awesome? And then the tax collector who was thought of as kind of a bad person at that time because he had to go around taking money from people He stands away and when he prays, he just tells God to have mercy on him because he knows what he does isn't a great job, like what he does isn't the best thing. And he asks God to have mercy on him. And Jesus says, when the tax collector went home, he was right with God or meant God was happy with him because even though he did a job that wasn't so great, he was still praying and asking God for mercy and forgiveness. He knew what he was doing was wrong, wasn't exactly the best, but he also wasn't kind of like bragging, right guys? Like how the Pharisee was, he wasn't bragging and saying, oh, I'm awesome. I'm great. I do all these wonderful things. He asked God for mercy. He knew he was a sinner and we all know that God forgives everybody. So Jesus says that this man went home and was right with God because he asked for mercy and he was truthful about who he was and knew to ask God for that. But the Pharisee, even though he was fasting and giving, donating money and prayed and went to church, um, he wasn't right because he wasn't humble. He was bragging. And even though he was good and doing these good things, he didn't need to go around saying, I did all these wonderful things. Because when he said that, he was looking for compliments. He was looking for praise to say, oh, he wanted like a, I'm going to clap in a second here, guys. He wanted, he wanted one of these. He wanted a round of applause. He wanted a pat on the back. When, when you do those things, you just do them to be good. You don't need the extra pat on the back and clap. You don't always need that reward. And that's why Jesus says, The Pharisee was not right with God because he wasn't humble. He was looking for praise. He was looking to brag about all these great things that he said he did. So the, it kind of ties in with the gospel that I read, because again, when you pray, you don't need to go around saying, Oh, look at me pray. I'm so fabulous. Just talk to God. And that's all he wants boys and girls. He doesn't need a big show. He just wants you to talk to him in your own simple words. And he wants it to be real. I mean, he wants it to be real, guys. He doesn't need it to be fake and phony like um, the people who in the first Bible passage who go on and on about how they pray or about the Pharisee who went on and on about all the wonderful things he did. So That is kind of how Jesus was talking to the disciples about praying, telling them you don't need to do it all big and flashy. Just God likes it short and simple. Tell him what you need, tell him what you need, turn to him for help and he'll be, and he'll be proud of you. And then tomorrow we're going to go into the actual prayer that he teaches them of the, our father. So for your assignment today, I'm going to have you, um, you're going to write three prayers in a Google form. And I would like you, if you can, boys and girls, 
pray them at bedtime or whenever, just short and simple and sweet, how Jesus kind of said we needed to do it and pray those prayers to God. You can ask, you can tell him anything. You can ask him anything. You can just say what you need to say, boys and girls, that's on your mind that you need God's help with. So, and that's going to be your assignment today. Um, If you have any other questions for me, let me know and I will talk to you all later. Bye.